Hello, I'm Stacy Sherman and welcome to the Doing CX Right Show where I talk about customer experience and employee experiences from different points of view. And today I'm very happy to introduce you to Eileen Brenner, who is also my mom, so extra special. Hello. <laughs> Hi Stacy, this is such a wonderful thing to be doing together. Yes, it is. And so I'm so excited to share your story because besides being my mom, you are truly a role model in the professional world. You are a change agent. And I didn't even realize it when I was growing up. And that's why I'm excited to share your story and to inspire others who um, don't always have it easy in the workplace, but that they can go against gravity and still be successful. So we're gonna dive deep into that. Are you ready? I am so ready. Okay, so first question is, you grew up with a mom, my grandmother, in the 50s, who was an incredible businesswoman. Can you share more about who she was and what made her so different at that time? My mother had the best of both worlds, and I say that because she was able to be a mother to four girls and at the same time work with my father, who was an accountant also. And we were very fortunate because the office was in the house, so I got to see what my mother was doing in the office all the time. And I actually was able to help her. And one of my favorite stories about my mother is she said to me, you've got to be productive, you've got to learn, so come into the office whenever you want and watch what I do. So what did you learn and really, I mean, there's a lot to tell, but the bottom line, what did you learn overall by having a working mom who being a certified public accountant at that time, that wasn't heard of, right? Right, right. And that had a lot to do with my father mm. because my father was the kind of man who was ahead of his time. And I say that because he was so supportive of my mother being able to, in case she, even if she didn't want to be at the time because she was very happy to be the backbone of the house and not of, uh, of the business. But then she wanted to become a CPA herself. And in order to do that, she had to go back to school because being a CPA required training. And my father was very supportive in the fact that he said, you go. She went every night for several years until she was comfortable and took the CPA exam. And he took care of us. And the reason I think this is so beautiful is because it's so important that men be supportive to all the women in their life, their wives, their daughters, their granddaughters. It makes such a difference when you hear someone say, you can do this and I'm going to help you and be supportive for you to do it. It's, so all men should do that. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. And, and I, I really believe that. I mean, even for myself, back in the day, I went to get my master's in business and I couldn't have done it if my husband didn't really support having worked all day and then I went at night and weekends. And I don't know that I could have done it without him really stepping up and helping and encouraging me um, the way grandpa did for, for grandma. So. I love mm -hmm. that. And I think it also emphasizes the point that in businesses, how important that men supporting women, um, there's plenty of room at the top. So your story really emphasizes that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about you. You entered the business world also. You went to college. What, talk about that. What you went to college for and what did you end up doing that also wasn't the norm at that time? So I graduated college in the 1960s and I decided to go into the business world because I loved math. I loved 
business. I loved people. And I saw that my mother and father were, they were doing nicely and they had a nice life. And I said, you know, I can do this too. So I majored in accounting, graduated from NYU in 1964. And when I graduated, I couldn't get a job. Why? Because I was a woman. They weren't hiring women accountants. Why? Because you're going to get pregnant and you're going to leave and we can't be sure of you. Really? So I was turned down. I was turned down on two different jobs that I went on. I was fortunate enough to meet the owner of one of the companies. And I went over to him. I said to myself, if I don't do this now, I'll never know the answer. And I went over to the owner and I said, excuse me, I don't want to bother you, but I really have an important story to tell you. And I told him the story, how I was turned down. And I said, if I was your daughter, or if I was a relative of yours, what advice would you tell me so that I could get a job with you? So he left and he said, come into the office tomorrow. I'll interview you myself. I went in, I said to him, if you give me the job, I promise you, you will be very pleased with the amount of work I can do and how much I know, just give me the chance. And he said something to me, which is so unbelievable. To this day, I remember he said to me, you know, you never had a woman work here before. And you're the Jackie Robinson of this company. If you make it, wow, that would be something. And so he gave me the job. And when I left, I think it was three years later, there were three other women working there. And I felt like I had accomplished so much just in that fact alone. I love that. But what gave you the, the guts to actually think that you could turn it around? I mean, what, you know, you... I don't know. I, you just have to do it sometimes. If it felt right, I felt like, what's the worst that could happen? All that could happen is you could say no. Well, I already had a no. So it could only turn into a yes. And that's what drove me in so many different ways during the years of my profession. They can always say no, but if you don't ask, you'll never know if they can say yes. I guess that's where I get it from, because I tell my kids all the time, if you don't ask, you don't get what's the worst that happens. So the light bulb's going off where I got that from. <laughs> from it's you. a good light bulb. <laughs> from don't you. let that light bulb ever go out. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so... So fast forward time, I mean, you had a lot of different unique jobs. Obviously, the cool one is uh, finding lost heirs, um, yes. right? I mean, that's unusual. And you've had a lot of really cool stories. But let's fast forward to Wall Street. What was that like, again, as a woman in a business, in a male-dominated field? Well, going down to Wall Street, was probably the most exhilarating thing I had ever done in my life because I, w I had friends who worked on the stock exchange and they said to me, you know, Eileen, why don't you come down and see what it's like down here? Maybe you'd like to do this too. And I was changing careers at that point. I said, sure. So I went down to the American Stock Exchange and watched what was going on there. And I said, wow, this is for me. I didn't know it was for me till I saw it, but I knew it was for me. And so I um, watched and listened and asked questions and made no bones about the fact that I was going to be a trader on this floor. And I was one of the first women traders on the floor. And it didn't bother me one bit to break the ice of being a woman in this field. I encountered all kinds of situations, men who said to me, you know, you're taking away a man's job. And I said, no, no, I'm creating my own job. I am not taking away a man's job. And eventually I got a wonderful, wonderful, um, the ability to be able to be in a crowd yelling and screaming, because that's what you do when, you, when, you, when you're a trader. And here I am trading against Merrill Lynch's people. I mean, the, the, the people who represent so many of the big corporations. And here's little Eileen, all four foot 11 and three quarters, and don't forget the three quarters, <laughs> um, 
trying to, to make it against these men. And I learned that something very interesting, my one of my favorite stories is not only that one of the men had to pick me up so that I could see the screens in front of me, but I had to take screaming lessons because they couldn't hear my voice. So I had to learn to talk like this. <laughs> and that, that in itself proved to me, I figured it out. I figured out what I needed to do to make it work for me. And it didn't come always easy. I had to, I had to play the game that, that had to be played, but I did and I succeeded. And I look back and I say, wow, ah, this is, this is what it's about. You got to try it. Remember, if you don't try, the answer is always no. So I have to guess that the fact that you were in a job prior, many jobs prior, where you said there weren't women in that accounting firm and you were going to be the Jackie Robinson and you were, you know, you were going to be the trendsetter because you got that, um, right? Because you got success there, I have to imagine that it gave you the confidence on Wall Street. Yes, it did. And no, it didn't. It's not, it's not like you go into it and say, well, I'm going to be a success. No, you have to fight the fear. The fear of what am I going to do if I don't succeed? Well, you know what? If you don't succeed, you won't know unless you try anyway. So that's one thing. The other thing is you got to have figure out how to take that first step. I found that once I made up my mind, I was going to do it. And it doesn't didn't come quickly. It took months to make myself comfortable and say, do I know what I need to know to take that first step? And I said, okay. At one point I said, okay. Took the first step, which was actually going down to the exchange and visualizing what I was going to do. And I said, you know what? I'm going to try it. What's the worst that can happen? If I don't like it or if I don't succeed, I'll stop and figure out the next step. Mm. I love those words. I'll figure it out. Um, yeah. I once had a boss who, when I would go to him and I'd ask for help, I would have tried five different solutions first to solve a problem and I got stuck and he'd say, sorry, go figure it out. And at the time I really didn't like him, but then I saw the present in that because now I figure out everything. So, um, I really get your story and, and it's the building blocks from that. Yeah. So what advice do you have? I mean, you just said a lot of really good things, but what advice do you have for, I want you to imagine there's CEOs in my room and, and leaders, it could be the president, whomever, you know, has some control over the workplace and the environment. What would you want them to know? What would you what would you say to them? First, I would have to have a good idea in my own mind, <clears throat> excuse me, what it is that I'm trying to accomplish. And if it's to get them to appreciate me, I have to appreciate myself first. I have to first take the pride in myself that I can do this. And I would talk to these people and say to them, give me a chance. I know I can do it. I know the work. I know what has to be done. Let me prove it to you. If I don't do a good job, you'll tell me and I'll know. But the most important thing is in your own mind, take it as a challenge. Think of it as something that, all right, they don't think I can do it. I'm going to prove to them that I can. And that's attitude that you need in order to beget other people to to see you that the way you want to be seen. I love that. Um, and, and to be, to keep it real and so many people I talk to and, and women and men confidence is, um, a showstopper fear and confidence. And I think, or I hope that people listening here will listen to, will, will take the advice of believing in yourself 
Because like you said, if you don't believe in yourself, why would anybody else believe in you? Exactly. Right? And if you, if you take the chance and you succeed, look at the wonderful world that opens up to you. And you can only take two paths. The path of, I'm not gonna take a chance. It's a dead end. You have nothing more to think about. If you take the path that has a chance and you succeed, wow, that's what it's about. Yeah, agree. So here's my last question for you. Knowing what you know now and all your experiences in the workplace and in life, what would you tell your younger self? That what you know now, what would you go back and tell you? I would say you did it right, kid, because I did all those things that I just said that I had done and will continue to do and suggesting for other people to do. I feel basically not that everything went perfect because it didn't. You make mistakes along the way, but you learn how to deal with stuff. And I did. I was very good at saying, all right, well, these people know what I need to know. I'm going to go listen to them and listening and, and uh, hearing what other people have to say was always, I was always very good at that. So the best thing I could say to my younger self is congratulations, kiddo. You did it the way you wanted. But you didn't know then no. that you were doing it right. <laughs> no, I had no idea. I just did it. Yeah. It's like the Nike commercial. I just, just do it. Yes. So for and those listening, yeah, for those listening, listen to Nike, listen to Eileen <laughs> Brenner and just do it and trust the process. And that's what life's about. Thank you. Yes. Well, I'm so glad to share your story and inspire others, both men and women to do it. Trust the process. Keep it real. Um, go after what you believe in, have the confidence, show up, and make a difference. Exactly. Thank you. Have a good Thank rest you. of the day. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>